Tucker has always been one for the finer things in life. From his name brand toys to his top of the line grain free high protein dog food. This dog lives the good life to say the least. So today, I'm putting my tools down and picking up my sewing kit to build him a one-of-a-kind dog lounge. We started the morning off by retrieving some three-quarter inch plywood my dad gave me a while back. This will be perfect for the base the cushion will set on in the nook. The thickness of the ply doesn't really matter too much. My best advice is get something cheap or even free. No one will really see this. I measured the inside of the nook and actually subtracted about 2 inches all the way around to be sure it would fit. I recommend doing this if you have a triangular layout like mine. Once I cut the plywood out, I took it back inside to size up this 3 inch fabric foam I bought at a fabric store. I actually recommend buying a mattress pad that is thinner. I'll leave the link down below. It will be way cheaper than what I bought this for. If I could go back, I would probably buy the mattress pad instead of this foam at the fabric store. A few things you'll need is some Loctite, a staple gun, and 3 8 inch staples, depending on the thickness of your plywood. The next step is to lay out some fabric matting, which will hide all the seams from your foam. Simply lay it out, and put your mattress pad or foam on top of it. Tucker really does seem to approve. And for some reason I lost the footage spraying the Loctite spray adhesive onto the plywood. This keeps the cushion from moving around on your plywood. Once all the fabric and cushions are aligned, it's time to drive the staples through the matting and into the plywood. It turned out real nice. I bought some fabric making sure I ironed it first to get all the folds, and wrinkle marks out before stapling. I stapled all the way around just like I did with the matting. When it came to the corners, I did my best to make it as clean as my limited upholstery skills would allow. I'll let you judge. Now for whatever reason, there was a lot of wood chips and dust on the fabric. It's not like we're doing this in a wood shop or anything. I bought this craft cover button kit, some washers, and screws to make a tufted, shabby chic look. Use the leftover fabric to cut out a circle designated by the template they provide in the box. Place the fabric in the tray, the button on top, and then the backing, push it all in, and there you go. You have yourself a button. I used some screws and a random pattern I thought looked decent and went to town. I don't suggest screwing all the way down because you will rip the fabric and be forced to sew it together, kind of like I had to do here. Take some two-part epoxy and glue the buttons down to the washer and screw assembly. Bring your cushion bench in and slide it in place. I really can't stress making the ply smaller than the actual dimension of the bench. It will not fit if you make it oversized. I added some pillows for decoration and comfort. Turn the light on. Only thing left to see is if Tucker enjoys the new throne. I really want to thank you all for watching Tucker and I build this bench cushion. If you have any questions or just want to tell me how bad my upholstery work is, feel free to do so in the comments below. As always, everything I use in this video is linked in the description below. If you want to see how I built this shiplap nook, I've linked it here. As always, like and subscribe so I know you're enjoying the content I'm making. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.